second generation non-nucleoside reverse transferase inhibitor that's recently been approved by the FDA. Um, and some background on it is that it's not teratogenic or thought to be teratogenic. Um, they can, they're going to, these trials I'll convert it to um, ephabrinib or ephabrins, ephabrins or cystina, which is. Um, so, and then another background point is that the phase 2b trial um, looked at a couple different dosings of this new medication and found that it was fairly efficacious um, when compared to ephabrins, but um, was associated with arrhythmias at higher doses and like prolonged QT, so there's some worry there. And so they needed to specifically look at like the lower dose. So the question in these two studies is, um, both here, pivoring <laughs> as efficacious as ephabrins, and they wanted to demonstrate non-inferiority. And so they defined this, this was preliminary data, so the trial is running for, night or I don't know if it's over yet, but it's running for 96 weeks, and this is data at the 58 week point. In um, non-inferiority, they were looking at a viral load less than 50 copies at the 48th week of treatment. Mm -hmm. So in looking at the study design, there's kind of two trials. <coughs> They're done one-to-one. -one. Um, the ECHO trial took 690 treatment-naive adult patients and gave them the lowest dose of, it's a once-a-day drug, um, lopivirine plus um, <coughs> Truvada, and they compared it to um, ephabrines plus Truvada. So head-to-head -head trial. Um, the THRIVE trial, on the other hand, took treatment-naive patients as well <coughs> and compared either the low dose of lopivirine or ephabrines with two NRTIs. And prescribers could pick one of those three combinations below. Um, so that part wasn't randomized. So to be included, you had to have a viral load greater than 50,000 copies. You couldn't have any resistance, and you had to be fully sensitive to the um, NRTIs. And like I said, the endpoint was a viral load less than 50 copies. So some of the results that they talked about um, were just like baseline characteristics of the groups. So in the ECHO trial, they were they weren't statistically different at all. The median age was 36. Most people had a log of 5%, with 46% in the real pivoting as having um, a viral load greater than 100,000 and 52% in the ephabrine. The median CD4 was around 250 in both of them, so it was like 249 and 260. Um, like as far as the study, 60% were Caucasian as well. The Thrive study um, were well balanced groups. You can see that um, the three in our TIs were not evenly um, distributed in the 600 plus patients. So what they did to kind of um, strengthen their data and get numbers is they pulled the trials and so they, they presented the results as ECHO alone, Thrive alone, or they put them together. And so <coughs> one thing they looked at, um, which I'll talk about more, I'll skip to my second bullet which um, the, they looked at the mean CD4 count, so not statistically different, but recovering increased the mean CD4 by 192 at 48 weeks, and a Fabrins by 175. And then when they looked at the intention to treat time to loss of virologic response, um, there's a table on the back, so I'll kind of go through those. So <coughs> they kept people on the intention to treat analysis, and there's that little box in the side of the text box. And just one thing to point out about these um, studies that have the time to loss of virologic response. So they group um, people dropping out because of virologic loss of virologic response with people who drop out because of adverse effects. So you can see that might kind of skew your data if people are dropping out for adverse effects. It doesn't necessarily mean the drug's not effective or vice versa. So um, looking at the pooled data, I kind of tried to highlight the box. Um, but the viral load, less than 50 copies. It was um, not statistically significant, but both drugs seemed to work about the same pivoting um, trend, it works, seems to work a little bit better. However, the virologic failure was higher for real pivoting. So it was 9% in the pooled data, 11 in ECHO, and 7.1 in Thrive. And when we look, when you break those down, um, some people, about 5.5% of patients were never suppressed with um, real pivoting versus 35 had rebound. Um, and that's I mean, you can see an echo, 6.5% were never, percent were never suppressed as well as 5% in the pivoting, so um, that's a little bit concerning. And then looking at why patients discontinue their medication, secondary to adverse effects, ephabrines across the board, more people discontinued. 
Um, and most side effects seem to be CNS related. And then other reasons for discontinuing if there were like loss to follow up or non-compliance, um, and that was pretty equal cool across the board. So like to summarize this table, I think you could say that almost twice as many people had virologic failure. Um, Oh, no. It's okay, guys. It's just like seven or eight hours. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's in the <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see it in funny. Mm -hmm. Did you have it this morning for sure? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because yeah. I had to use it. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I'll call to more help, and I should be able to cram in some like picture taking. Just be thankful. Mm -hmm. So I lost the, my bad ones, which is the jail badge, the civilian badge. <laughs> oh, and I had to call like the sergeants, and they like put this like they're like they treating me like, like I was out. a criminal. <laughs> they lost, they're like, oh no. Well, they oh your VA no. Badge, right? your yeah. new VA badge. No, I don't you, have a new VA badge. So you have that's good. Yeah. 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 I wouldn't yeah. be like when he It's all replaceable. <laughs> Nobody's injured. Nobody has no. medical no. illness. Yeah. 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 You didn't get stuck by a homeless IV drug. Pepsi. <laughs> Gouged. Not just true. It's gouged. No, we have your babies. Right. Your nice kids to my bed. So, um, kind of the key point ending from this table is that almost twice as many people had virologic failure um, with the, this new drug, um, Lupivirine, and so either it wasn't suppressed or they had a rebounding. Um, and then there was no difference. Um, based on like gender, region, or in, um, race in their sub-analysis. So then when they looked at um, resistance data in these two drugs, um, I think what's important to know is that um, Ropivirine had resistance <coughs> 63% of people who, so sorry, of the 600 patients, t about 10% had virologic failure, so about 60 patients. And 60% of those had new and NRTI resistant mutations, and the most frequent, frequent mutation was this E138K, which is really important because um, this is a common mutation which, which confers resistance to um, atrophy mm -hmm. um, or intellect, and often causes class-wide resistance. So um, it's pretty concerning. Whereas the Favrin's the most common mutation is K103N, but this is really a less worrisome mutation. It doesn't cause as much, as from my understanding, class-wide mm -hmm. resistance. And then the other scary part is that for NRTIs, the most commonly acquired mutation um, is this M184I, which causes resistance to both um, FTC and 3TC. So of these patients, greater than 50% of people who developed virologic resistance had failure to two classes. So if you've kind of felt um, repivering your in a sense, you're putting yourself at risk of losing two major classes of drugs, which is a downfall. Um, when looking at adverse events, there's a 17% um, in the Repliverine versus 38 in the Favrin's group, so less dizziness, insomnia, and nightmares. Um, the lab abnormalities were about half as well, and most common lab abnormalities um, when they looked were LFTs. Statistically significant were LFTs and LDL levels. Um, and then there was no difference on um, serum creatinine or changing like QTC interval, which they had originally been worried, which they were originally worried about with the higher doses of opivirine. So I think kind of the take home points from this like phase three trial is that opivirine was, in a sense, not inferior to ephavirin, but um, in a lot of ways um, did quite well in suppressing viral load. but the virologic failure is higher and maybe at a higher consequence as well with the possibility of losing for sure one class if, of um, one class of drugs being that in an RTI and possibly two. Um, but it does have fewer side effects and so I think um, it's like right now um, more of a second line drug but they are trying to formulate it with Truvada because it is a easy I think you have to like weigh, weigh, um, <coughs> weigh the options because they're trying to formulate it with Truvada so it can just be once a day medication and then patients might be more compliant and the risk of, of being compliant and having resistance would be a lot lower um, if it was a simplified regimen. So, um, Approved yesterday. Oh. Completa. Yeah. Awesome. Completa, is that the name? Completa. So. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, I feel so complete. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like a good alternative that has a lot of. Nice. Mm -hmm.